I want to take you on an adventure, looking at contours, watershed, key line, or well, at least a key point. And I've seen how some animals have been doing a bit of key line. I'm in the Rose Valley Farm area, and I'm gonna have a quick look at how the water comes down to here. So the watershed for Rose Valley. This Rose Valley. Some water comes from Saddleback Mountain. So let's have a look at Saddleback Mountain. And these are billion dollar properties. I don't know, I just, you know, for the record, I don't know these people at all. And I haven't designed for any of them. Oh. What's going on? Okay. I see a hamlet here, a couple of houses. A lot of erosion just here has been caused. I think that's a disturbance from cons from construction. It's given me the idea that they're doing some construction. Is I can still see whoops. I can see um, some timbers here. Maybe left over from construction of this road. But I doubt it. It's like there's something new going on in here, and they're very close to the edge of the plateau. Let's just hope they keep the trees. Some people chop down the trees because they want a view and um, that's not going to work for them there. If we look at this property here, I'm going to take you out a little bit. It seems as though the water is coming down. This is a south, gentle south slope. See the road on the ridge, perfect for fighting fire because the fire often follows the ridge. The water was probably coming down here. See this little bit of a gully, this line here. They've given up here, which is good. They've not tried to put um, pasture there. I reckon that might be a bit rough in there. And it's sort of filters the water before it gets to here. I don't know how old these houses but ah, they look pretty young. Maybe this one's um, 70s or 80s, but this one's definitely, oops, sorry. This one over here is definitely recent. So it's a bit hard to tell what's going on there. I think they're trying to vegetate after the construction. If you look here though, I'm going to zoom in. And I'm looking at, this could be their septic from the house, it's a fair distance. And not very nice because it's actually now at the top of a watershed to this house. I don't know who let them put their septic there, but I I'm not sure what's going on there. Maybe that's the septic. Right, so we can see water starts at this house comes down here into a very gentle gully. You may not even be aware of it if you owned that property. You may be aware of some water sitting here, coming here. I don't know what they've got here for their road. They maybe got a culvert to get the water under the road, some sort of pipe. They could have used the road, all of this, and fenced that off to um, grow stuff. See how that could be, water could come down here and you could put the camber, the slope on the road, just gently so that it could have great um, benefit there. You could use it. Don't seem to have done that. So then the water comes, I don't know what this dry thing is here, maybe some sort of orchard. Uh, water comes down here and into the barrier dam, small pond. Well, pretty big if you're there, but you can't really put a boat on it. Not that big. So and then the overflow, I think, is here. Goes into there. Look how green that is. That's lovely. But they're not using that. They could fence that off and grow other uh, favourite crops in there whatever they're into, 
And then fortunately, on this property, they've been smart. Ooh, there's some rocks here. They've been fairly smart and they've said, look, just let it go. This area here, let it go. Let the water go into there and grow what it wants to do. Hopefully it's not just regrowth and it's not full of weedy plants. Hopefully it's got some um, indigenous plants in there. Do you see how dark it is in here? That's telling me it's pretty steep. The shadow is pretty d deep. And we've now hit uh, what I think is the edge of the plateau. Let's go out and have a check on that. There's a little bit of greenery there. Do you see how that undulates like that? It sort of tells me um, we've hit the edge of a ridge. Let's go down out a bit more, get a better overview. See, this is a bit like a crater. I think Saddleback might have once been a crater, volcanic formation. Here, this is a drier ridge, possibly higher mountain than that there, that area there. So the water comes here, down Uauri Creek, and then to these properties here. I want to show you in here examples of pretty bad planning. The ploughing here is good and bad, mostly bad, unfortunately. See here, we're starting to get more on the contour. I think the contour is actually like this. There it is. That would be contour ploughing. Gives a lot more stability to the site. Keeps the nutrients, the fertiliser, or whatever they're using, the seeds, keeps them on site. Here, this is ridiculous. It's just going straight downhill. I'm not even sure why they went up there. Oh, anyway, let's go across to the next little ridge. So there's a creek there and here is a ridge. There's got to be something pushing the water into a creek. I'm going to zoom out. We can see another watercourse here. So this is, see, that's quite dry. If you had key line, you could take the water from here, with, put in a barrier dam, small barrier dam, find the key point, something like that, here, and you could put it all around the water around here, like that. It could flow beautifully. But this is one of the wettest valleys in Australia and richest farming, rich as in nutrient and water resources. One of the richest farming districts in New South Wales. Which one to move? It doesn't want I'm gonna go out for a bit. I wanna have a look in here because I think at some point, somebody started constructing or they did construct and they've gone. See that there? Those rocks, very geometrical. I doubted that it's an archaeological um, finding. I think a house might have, or a shed might have been there at some point. This is called Rose Valley Farm, but that's just the flag to the farm further down the hill. If you look over here, what's going on? I can see here that there's all these almost on contour markings. That's, I could bet my bottom dollar, that's from cattle or sheep. The sheep know it's exhausting and really compresses your bones to try and go downhill, directly downhill. It hurts your legs. They also know it's exhausting 
going straight uphill. So they don't do it. They're not that stupid. They traverse because they browse as they go. They're not in a hurry. They traverse along the contour, slightly off contour. And I'm wondering sometimes if this is how yeomans discovered the, the, uh, the formula for key mine because it's very natural for animals to do this. See here? I think this is the key point. But I wouldn't be able to tell you that unless I looked at the topographical map. I'd have to look at, do the mathematics to really know that this is a key point for this little valley, the Rose Valley Farm um, Valley. Because when, if, when we go back out, you can see this area is called Rose Valley but it actually has um, primary, ridge, primary ridges here, one, two, and three, possibly four, I don't know where the, the region ends. There's at least five ridges in this valley. It's quite a complex valley, Rose Valley. So here I'm saying to you, I think this is a dry ridge. This farm is really lucky. If they wanted to go organic, they could do it without the worry of getting any watershed from that property up there. Because you see, this is a really big ridge above them. It's the top of the mountain there. There's no properties up here. Then there's a ridge here. So they've got two ridges either side. I mean, if they were going to do organic bees, that's a different story, but I'm talking about something that's a crop dependent on water. They could possibly not get much um, air pollution and they could do an organic, certified organic farm here. All right, so we're going to go in again and find that key point. Well, I reckon it was here because the water comes over and starts to deposit, slows down here at that green section there. And this, if you own this property, you get all my design advice for free today. So this is where you would put a dam or a pond. It's not directly above the house, so if it were to break, it's not a risk. Put your pond in here and then you can gravity feed down into your zone one, zone two, as in homegrown vegetables and orchard. These, these guys are so close to the city, they don't really need to grow their own food. Look what's going on in here. I find this quite fascinating, a huge tree actually. Fantastic for shading. Um, what seems, to, if you had your pond there, you could gravity feed to here and this could be really lush, but the opposite seems to be happening. Look at this property up close as, as close as it will let me go. It looks like this is a bit of a holding pen. Like it's an area where you put sick animals or um, young animals that might have fallen off the back of a truck and potty calves, things like that. This seems to be fenced off for intensive care of animals. And it's just eroded. Instead of using cell grazing or um, rotation that just seems to be maybe they've got a pet horse there or their favorite horse and they keep them in confinement but this is not healthy and there's also some erosion there the other possibility see that brown area there that might be just where they turn the trucks around this farm could be so much more productive with design but i suspect because the property is so expensive we're talking about multi-billion dollar property um, that is a hobby farm and it probably doesn't need to be very productive just fun um, but you could you know in permaculture design you could still make that property really fun we could have had a natural swimming pool here 
Um, they do have that in Mount Kira. It's just constantly spring-fed natural swimming pool. I don't need to worry about it hibernating over winter. None of those sorts of worries. You could have, see that massive tree? You could have a few of those around your natural swimming pool. In fact, I'd probably live up here and would relocate. It's not far to go. But that's all um, I've got to say about key line. We don't have, this example is not functioning as a key line property, except where the animals are doing their thing. They're doing a bit of key line there. There's a lot of erosion which should not be erosion. And a key line design would make this farm really sing. Thanks for now. Bye.